Hello again, YouTube, and welcome back to Just Get a Tesla. This morning, I'm sat inside my Model Y long range because we've got to talk about something really important. How far can this car go, and how do you know? I'm making this video very specifically for a single comment that somebody left on my channel, and I think they asked a really, really important question. How far can the car go? go how can you trust what the mileage display says when in reality it does something completely different and as i started writing my response i realized something quite simple a lot of people aren't using the correct display in their car okay we are parked up and as you can see i have got 50 percent of the battery left the car's been sat overnight it wasn't plugged in okay here's what you can do this is the main display yeah that's showing my state of charge a lot of people though have it showing that which is how many miles are left in the car so 154 miles on a 50 percent battery is 308 miles of total range yeah? Well, not necessarily. The thing to understand about this display up here is that that is showing the WLTP range. Tesla are no different to any other car manufacturer wanting to sell vehicles in the UK. They use this thing called WLTP. It is basically a laboratory test. How far can the car go under their test conditions. The idea is that everybody is doing the same test and that means that it's fair and it's balanced and that you've got the same comparison across all of the different cars. And that's all well and good, but there is a slight problem with it, which is the test isn't real. In the real world, you might well get WLTP, but you almost certainly won't. And this isn't just a Tesla thing. This is any car you look at the fuel consumption on a petrol or diesel car and look at what the posted mpg number is and then think about what you actually get so the comment in question was from a chap who was going to drive to hexham in northumbria his model y standard range was showing him that he should have 260 miles of total range and it's a 146 mile trip and the car was then telling him he was going to arrive with 30 miles left so 260 miles versus 173 where have the rest of the miles gone he asked and it's fairly simple it is three degrees outside this morning so i'm recording this in the beginning of March and that means that it's still late winter here in the UK we had some snow quite a bit of snow on Saturday it's all gone but it came it went it's cold so let's think about how efficiency is affected when you're driving an EV first of all there are factors so temperature is definitely one of them when it's colder you will not go as far your battery is less efficient in the way that it performs. Yes, you can warm the battery up via preheating and as you're driving, the battery gets some temperature into it just basically by the um, simple chemical reactions of outputting power, but it won't go as far when it's cold. We also need to factor in things like if your car has got to push water off the road with the tires, that's resistance, that means it burns more energy and it's exactly the same if you had a petrol or diesel car, it just might not be quite as noticeable. And the third factor, of course, is wind. If the wind is in your face when you're driving, then you are going to burn more energy to cut through it. The other point, of course, is how do you drive? Because the test conditions and the way that the car is being done in those test conditions is probably not the way that you drive. Some people are naturally heavy footed. Other people are naturally gentle. The way that you drive will impact the amount of range that you've got. There is good news though. If you've got a Tesla, then you can look at exactly how far you're going to go in the real world. You don't need to worry about that WLTP number. The car will tell you 
how far that you can go. And we're going to show you now how to get at that information. So the first one is this number up here. I never use this number and I really do mean never. I always have it showing percentage because that is a far more useful figure than a made up mileage number. Here's what you should do though. If you're going to navigate to somewhere, so let's say I wanted to go to Genshield Bridge, which is a beautiful place uh, that's appeared on a couple of my videos. So I stick Genshield Bridge in and that is going to tell me that I'm going to arrive on 22%. So 67 miles, 22%. Okay. That is a real world range and it's getting that based on my current consumption so if you go into your app drawer down here and see this one here that's energy and you put energy on okay energy has got various different displays on it so because i've told it that i am navigating it is now projecting how much energy i am going to burn by looking at the sat nav as you can see it's actually showing that I am going to regenerate downhill at the last little bit of my journey to get to my prediction of 21.7%. But then you go on to consumption. So the consumption tab, this has got a variety of different buttons on the bottom. So these are basically showing you average range, which is here, or you can see instant range. So if you've got a fuel car, and you put it on instant fuel consumption. That's the one where it goes up and down wildly depending on how you're driving, okay? So leave it on average is the best way of doing this. And then it shows you your average across the last 30 miles, the last 15 miles, or the last five miles. So this is saying that the last 30 miles that this car was driven yesterday, it burned 299 watt hours per mile, which is 123 miles now if i go back up here at the top and put that onto mileage 154 so the chap who was asking about where have the rest of my miles gone well you can see the wltp range is 154 miles based on conditions yesterday and the way i'm driving it it's 123 miles hmm but if i go on to 15 <laughs> miles yeah um, it's 377 watt hours per mile, which gives me only a range of 98. Or if I go on to five miles, it's 254 watt hours per mile, which gives me 145. Now, 145 is pretty close to 150. Well, it's just dropped one because I'm burning a little bit of power sitting here. So that's pretty close. And this gives you a feel for basically what you need to be doing. You need to be doing something like 245 watt hours per mile in this car to get the WLTP range. Now, I can do that. I have had some trips where I have got that kind of efficiency, but most of the time, not. So since I reset my trip computer, and that is basically for this winter, um, I have done 295 watt hours per mile. So that's saying 299, which is about one the overall average. So I am not going to get the 308 miles of range in this car during the winter. But that's okay because if I am navigating, yeah, it tells me what charge I'm going to be on when I get there. And the other thing that the car can do, and this is where it gets really quite clever, what it will do is you've got this energy chart here and it's constantly calculating basically this number. What range do you have? And if you're driving in a way where it's going to burn more power than the car has got, so you're going basically too fast because the faster you go, the more energy you burn it will tell you it will come up on the screen basically around here with a yellow bar just above the directions thing telling you that you need to go say below 65 miles an hour to reach your destination so the car will tell you what to do and essentially that's that 
don't look at the mileage thing on the top of the screen because it's almost certainly wrong. Use your navigation to put in where you're going and the car will tell you to the tenth of a percent how much power you're going to have when you get there. It will tell you how fast you can drive. That's it. It's pretty simple. I do get comments quite often when I'm doing road trip videos. You say, oh, Ian, that looks really complicated. You're constantly talking about range and energy use. Well, I am, but only because I'm making YouTube videos. Most of the journeys that I do in this car, I'm not making YouTube videos and I'm not having to think about it because this car has got plenty of range for most of the trips that I do. And if you want that last little bit of reassurance, I told the car to navigate to Gernshield Bridge and it says I'm going to arrive on 21.7%. I know for a fact that this is accurate. Quite a lot of EVs have a range to go indicator, which we lovingly describe as the guessometer because it is absolutely a guess and it can just go up and down wildly. The Tesla one, is accurate. So I did Liverpool to Edinburgh last winter without a charge and it told me the car was going to arrive on 2% and it arrived on 1.8%. Now you might be going that's way too tight 2% sounds absolutely awful but the car knew precisely how much energy that I was going to burn. As I showed you on the drive tab of the energy app, it looks at the route that it's telling you to go. And if you drive that route, it knows what the elevation changes are and therefore how much energy you're going to burn. It's pretty accurate. And that's the secret. Let the car worry about range so that you don't have to. And on that happy note, we're going to leave it there. Please subscribe if you haven't done already. Like the video, comment. The algorithm loves all of those things. And I will see you back here very soon next time on Just Get a Tesla.